When I first arrived in Australia, I needed some computer parts and I went to a store, PLE Computers. Let's go back to the year 2002. Here we have a price list with CPUs. We recently checked out the Celeron 1.7 at 149 Australian dollars. It was good value, but the performance was really bad. But have a look at the bottom of the list. For $1,100, you could get the top Pentium 4 running at 2.8 gigahertz with the more modern Northwood core. So let's compare the worst and the best CPU, run some benchmarks and play some classic games. The Intel Celeron does not have a lot going for it. It has only 400 megahertz FSB. The cache is only 128 kilobytes and usually you would pair it up with a budget motherboard supporting single channel SD, RAM or maybe DDR memory. The Pentium 4, however, got quite a few improvements. The FSB is now 533. Cache got upgraded to 512 kilobytes and you would usually paired with a nice motherboard, you would see dual channel support early on with RAM bus and then later also chipsets supported dual channel DDR memory. We have a socket 478 motherboard from ASRock, a total of 512 megabytes of DDR memory in dual channel configuration. The NVIDIA GeForce 4 Ti4200 together with the 45 23 graphics drivers. We have the Creative Labs Sound Blaster ODG2 ZS. For storage, we're using the USB GoTek floppy emulator together with a modern 32 gigabyte SATA SSD and the StarTech SATA 2 ID adapter. Let's dive straight into some benchmarks, starting with GL Quake. The Celeron 1.7 already did pretty well in this benchmark, but of course, the Pentium 4 is much better. At 640 by 480, we are going from 383.9 FPS to 653.8. In Quake 2, also a nice improvement. At 640 by 480, almost double the performance from 242.8 to 476.5. Quake 3 also runs much better, giving the GeForce 4 the opportunity to really show what it can do. At 640 by 480 from 126.2, we are now seeing 247.3 FPS. It was in the direct 3D benchmarks where the Celeron started to struggle. Here we have Expendable and we're getting 76 FPS at 640 by 480. That improves to 150.9, so a huge improvement. We can see the same picture in Draken at 640x480, 64.9 FPS for the Celeron 1.7, but look at that, the Pentium 4, 126.2 FPS. That's the Pentium 4 running at 2.8 gigahertz. And now let's test some classic games. This is what this hobby is all about, although I must say I enjoy working with the hardware. Yeah, I think I actually enjoy it more, but I'm really, also enjoying playing games more recently. Here we have Screamer 4x4. This is a game we've been playing in quite a few videos and in a past video I was close to giving up because this game is really hard and I wasn't able to unlock anything and had no progress to show for in the championship. But I have persevered and now making slow progress. I have managed to unlock a few stronger engines, rear differential, and also some Easy improved tires, as well as the Toyota Land Cruiser. To make the game a little bit easier, press F3. It will drop the camera back a little bit further so it's easier to see the car and the environment, especially where the next gates are. Press here. L to turn on the headlights. Some of the stages are quite moody and dark and it definitely helps you out. I haven't quite figured out all the details about the unlocks because every well. vehicle you need to uh, unlock things again and what you can't do is pick a new vehicle and then do the first championship stage again hoping that you can get the unlocks for the new car. It doesn't seem to work like that. I did have a look in the user manual but it's as useful as telling an alcoholic to just stop drinking. There is no information about the unlock system, how you can progress. 
the differences and yeah it just explains the controls you seem to have to figure everything out yourself from a technical aspect i like this game it supports high resolutions we are running at 1024 by 768 it has support for opengl for direct 3d and glide so it's a fun game to benchmark and test all sorts of video cards i bought the game from gog install it on a modern computer copy the game folder onto your retro gaming PC and off you go. So yeah, Screamer 4x4 is back on the roster. I'm enjoying Take it more. It, it is still very hard. I also figured out that you can do some practice on, runs in the there. tracks to learn the uh, routes and where the gates are and then you're better prepared for the championship. So I will continue playing this game and sharing my progress and here we have max Payne. good news i have completed this game this is very difficult and i reached out to you for some advice in a previous video you gave me good tips which are save frequently quick save and quick load check all the uh, drawers and lockers for health packs but also some of the crates you can just shoot them and you will find health packs in there. Still, I found this game too difficult. In the beginning, those strategies worked, but the difficulty just gets out of hand and it became frustrating. So I used a cheat. You have to enable developer mode and then you type in God and you will get unlimited health. And then the game is really enjoyable. You can have fun playing around with all the weapons and focusing on the story. Uh, really getting uh, involved in the, in the mood and the atmosphere and especially the audio. I'm not quite sure if this game supports EAX, but it's really well done. There is positional audio going on over headphones and yeah, really enjoyed playing this one. The controls were pretty good out of the box, but I remapped some of the bullet time and jumping commands to make it a little bit easier. Windows 98, yeah, it does support multiple buttons on the mouse. I'm using a Logitech G400 USB mouse that worked pretty well. And where can you obtain this game? Well, it's not available on GOG. This is the Steam release. As you know, Steam doesn't work under Windows 98 or Windows XP. So I had to find a no CD patch, but otherwise the game runs perfectly fine. So yeah, one game ticked off the bucket list. That is awesome. So I'm continuing playing a few of the other games, which you will see in future videos. And yeah, I pay attention to your recommendations of other games to test. I keep a list and we will definitely play some more games in the future. But I don't want to start too many games because then you sort of, yeah, lose the passion for uh, actually playing. If you have too many options, if you have too many games, you will actually end up playing less. So less is more and um, so far I'm really enjoying myself playing these classic games and yeah, keep those recommendations coming as to what other games you want to see on the channel. So what are my thoughts? Of course the Pentium 2.8 is much faster. That outcome was to be expected. Intel improved quite a few things over the life with the Pentium 4. For example, the front side bus compared to the Celeron went from 400 to 533 cache from 128 to 512 kilobytes. And also the chipsets improved. In the beginning on the budget side of things, you had SD-RAM, then single channel DDR. And now on this main board, we can use dual channel DDR for more memory throughput. Looking at the price list, 1,100 Australian dollars for the Pentium 4, that is a huge premium. Now you could have picked a lower clocked version, but in my opinion, the Athlon XP was the way to go in terms of value. The clock speeds were lower, it was more efficient, higher IPC, and for gaming performance, it was terrific. The value was definitely much better. One aspect where the Intel system is really nice is in areas such as compatibility. It just works and that's the highlight of working with an Intel system. I had heaps of issues with via chipsets and also Enforce not working anymore and with retro computer parts. Yeah, you wanna have a 
an easy life and you want to have less frustrations and focus on playing the games. And with Intel, you get reliable chipsets, the drivers are beautiful, compatibility and um, reliability. Those are all aspects where Intel scores really highly. So another thumbs up for the Pentium 4 for building a Windows 98 retro gaming PC. I just love the Pentium 4. I know that opinion, some don't agree. They call it space heater and whatnot. And yeah, it's true. The later Prescott Pentium 4s, they do run very hot. And even the higher clocked Northwood Pentium 4s, they do produce quite a bit of heat. But compared to the Athlon XP, they all have the 12 volt additional CPU connector here. So they're very friendly with modern power supplies. You don't need a old school power supply with very strong five volt rails. So that's another highlight where the Intel ecosystem is very retro friendly. So I hope you found this video interesting taking the Willamette based Celeron, which is really one of the worst CPUs you can pick and then upgrading it to the 2.8 gigahertz Pentium 4. And yeah, the difference in, in performance is absolutely beautiful. It's totally different to what you're seeing these days where the difference between a budget and a high-end CPU, in, in terms of gaming, it's, 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 it's really minimal. Um, back in the day, you would get double the performance. That's just not the case anymore. Now you have to dig really deep with the uh, one percentage lows to actually see a difference, or you need like a GDX um, 4090 video card or something like that to really see the difference between CPUs. So yeah, those times were just a lot more interesting. And yeah, that's why I enjoy looking into the past and sharing my passion with you. In the uh, descriptions, you will find download links to resources to help you out build your own retro gaming PC projects. And now I'm looking forward to reading the comments, share your thoughts about the Pentium 4 in the context of retro PC gaming. And that's it. Thank you so much for watching. I shall see you soon with another one.